Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> it's really nice to be able to see you uh, this afternoon. And who's here for the first time? <laughs> you're here for the first time. Well, welcome. I'm glad that you can uh, come along and join us here. And uh, so I just would like to, to just open up with a word of prayer, if that's all right with you, uh, because I'm a Christian and I'd like to just uh, ask for, for wisdom from above. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you for everyone here, and I pray that you'll be with me and you'll guide my, my talk, and I pray that the wisdom that comes from you will actually be able to be applied for each one of us. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. So uh, you would be familiar with the term rockabye baby and uh, you would know that this is a nursery rhyme. As you know, the, the song goes, rockabye baby on the treetop, when the wind blows, the cradle will rock. And then it goes, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall and down will come baby cradle and all. It's a bit of a tragic ending to the nursery rhyme. But it's a nursery rhyme, surprisingly, that's supposed to lullaby a baby to sleep. And I'm going to be talking about sleep, as Kevin has mentioned. And the topic sleep is something that we all are very familiar with because we do it every day. Well, at least at whatever level of sleep that we have, each one of us have different kinds of hours and also timing of sleep. Uh, but there is one thing that we all have in common when it comes to sleep. And sleep is, we all want to sleep like a baby, don't we? And it would be nice to be able to wake up early in the morning, or whatever time in the morning, or whatever time of the day, and go, I slept like a baby. And it's one of the things that I appreciate more and more as I get older, because I realize, wow, there's so many different things that goes on in life. And sometimes, and not just sometimes, and oftentimes, and in fact, it could be even all the time, that we put sleep as, a, as something that becomes as a waste of time. Uh, and I used to actually think that sleep is a waste of time. There's so much to do. There's so much to think about and see and watch and read and talk with others and catch up and, and just do all the little things, especially when you get home and you want to, and you start thinking about them before you go to sleep and you want to get on with them. And sleep becomes pretty much uh, dampened and pretty much put aside uh, so that we can actually be more effective and get on with our tasks. But I wanna, what I want to share with you today is that sleep is actually one of the things that make you more effective. And in fact, if you want to be a leader and if you want to be someone who is successful, if you want to be smarter, if you want to be more creative, if you want to be more interesting, you need to sleep. And that's what I want to share with you today. Dr. William Dermond, who is a doctor uh, in sleep medicine, he's so-called the father of sleep medicine, he says, you're not healthy unless your sleep is what? Healthy. healthy. Think about that for a moment. You're not healthy unless your sleep is healthy. This tells us more on the fact that sleep brings upon, uh, can actually, well, not just can actually, sleep is very important for your health. And another one from William Shakespeare here when he was writing Macbeth, it says, sleep that knits up the, ra the raveled sleeve of care, the death of each day's life, sore labor's bath, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. Well, Macbeth was not one who actually really, uh, he could not sleep. And, and sleep becomes, if you lose sleep, you actually appreciate what sleep can do to your body. So the average person in a lifetime, 36% of their life is spent on sleep. Think about it, 36%. That's a third, a little bit over a third. And what do you do if you think about it, a little over a third of your day is going to be spent on sleep or a little bit of your, th or a third, a chunk of your third um, of your lifetime is spent on sleep. And if you sleep, uh, if, you, if you live until about 90, you pretty much 
have slept for 32 years. That's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, now some of you may not even be 32 yet, and some of you are already way past 32 or maybe on 30s, but you pretty much sleep for about 32 years in your lifetime. That's a long time. But that actually is something that has been designed in our body because we need sleep. Here is a definition of sleep. The na a natural periodic state of rest for the mind and body in which the eyes usually close and consciousness is completely or partially lost so that there is a decrease in bodily movement and responsiveness to external stimuli. This is uh, taken from the American Heritage Medical Dictionary. So sleep is a natural periodic state of rest for the body and also for the mind. And it says, during sleep, the brain in humans and other mammals undergoes a characteristic cycle of brain wave activity that includes intervals of dreaming. So this describes basically when you close your eyes and you're on the bed and you're, you're lying there at night for the next five, six, seven, eight, nine, could be even ten or more. And I want to share with you this, uh, this clip and it talks about what happens to your brain or what does your brain do while sleeping. a neat uh, clip and the lady, the editor really of Huffington Post who founded it, she discovered the importance of sleep and she wrote quite a number of articles on sleep or have, have contributed uh, to the editorial team on what um, sleep is about and have actually shared it on Huffington Post. And so here your brain is doing all sorts of things. And I want to share with you basically some of the five things that your brain does done. Um, well, on top of these, it says benefits of sleep, repairment of muscles, it enhances the immune system, it increases your memory capacity, it reduces the inflammation, it increases physical performance, it increases lifespan. Now, if you think about this, these are factors which are pretty important uh, in, for your own body and for your own health. And not only just that, for your own intelligence. So during sleep, our brain makes us smarter and more interesting. Wow. <laughs> you know, if you want to be more interesting or you want to be more creative, you want to sound more intelligent, you want to be able to be quick to pick up things, you just need to sleep. And, uh, and also, our brain creates long-term memories and make decisions as well as create connections between different informations that we've gathered during the day or in the past. So all of these things helps us to be able to have these, uh, to be able to just work and function and, and do the, the things that we need to do, especially in making decisions. Now, I just would like to share with you how does that work and what happens when you're sleeping. So the states of sleep are divided into two. So there are two that are called REM or non-REM. REM stands for rapid eye movement. And of course, the non-REM is non-rapid non eye movement. And I'll share with you some of the things that happens here. So here is a sleep cycle diagram. So Basically, when you sleep, you go through stages as you sleep. And if you walk with me through this diagram, in the stage one, you, uh, you induce yourself into this 
relaxing mode of sleeping you close your eyes and slowly your muscles starts to slow down and then you would twitch a little bit and you'll just fall into sleep and then the breathing pattern changes and uh, and the heart rate also slows down and then there is also a decrease in body temperature this is why it's important that the temperature in the room is also modified to one that is actually slightly cool to 18 degrees so that you are able to fall into sleep easily and remain um, in, a, in a good sleep cycle. Then the deep sleep begins and the brain begins to generate this slow delta wave and then it goes further into this deeper sleep um, where uh, there is just this uh, the limited muscle activity and and the brain wave is actually changing all the time. And uh, then there is this, uh, it enters into this rapid eye movement where uh, there is a lot of uh, dreaming and, uh, and the muscles also relax at this time. And this is when our brain, if you're thinking, oh, well, maybe when we sleep, our brain also sleeps. But actually, our brain is very active when we're sleeping. And our brain is actually doing its work that it cannot do during the day while we're actively looking and it's processing information and sharing things and storing things. And the brain is, is going through this motion of trying to consolidate all of the different um, uh, data that is coming in through the day. So this is kind of the, uh, the sleep cycle and our brain uh, is divided into regions where different regions are involved in different things. So for example, the forebrain at the top of the uh, diagram there, the forebrain areas, they're involved in the neuropsychology of dreaming. And then you've got also the uh, bottom part here uh, of the hypothalamic region. Um, I don't think this has a, oh yeah. This hypothalamic region here, uh, that's involved pretty much in circadian rhythm. So each one of us has a circadian rhythm. It tells us when we feel tired, when we feel like, oh, we need to sleep or we need to be awake. And then also it tells us that, hey, you're sleepy and you need to actually slow down now. And then it also controls the change between the rapid eye movement uh, phase to the non-rapid eye movement and back and forth. So there is, there is quite a bit of, a, uh, of involvement here. And if you look at some of these, uh, just this flow of diagram of the sleep way control rhythm, uh, when you have the sun coming into your eyes, you sense light, not even just even the sun, light in your bedroom or light in the bathroom when you turn on the light. The retina then it detects that there is light coming in and the photoreceptor uh, senses then tells the hypothalamus and says, hey, there is something going on. We're no longer sleeping because we're awake now. And, uh, and it sends this like, okay, so this is a time we need to be more aroused. We need to be more awakened. And then the, it sends another uh, signal to the brainstem. And the brainstem then sends another signal to the cortex, to the subcortex, and the thalamus. And it tells us, tells well, our body that we need to get going and starts to think about what you need to do. And so there's a lot, of, um, a lot of pathways that are going on within our brain during our sleeping time and also during the time when you're about to sleep and when you're waking up. So this is a bit more uh, just the NRM sleep, NREM sleep which is 75% of the time. There are different stages. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when you're just slowly to uh, begin to sleep, there's different changes with the EEG tracing, which is really your brainwave activity. And then you become disengaged with the environment. Uh, and then you fall into this deep sleep stage. And it occurs at 90 minute intervals. And you, usually during this time, it's not necessary. When you dream during this time, you don't really remember what happens. And uh, so then during the REM sleep, which is 25% of the sleep time, um, our brains are actively dreaming. And we're also thinking about the things that have happened during the day. So it's kind of like when your computer has to go through a reboot system. 
I don't know if it applies in Apple, but I know in PC it has to do that. And a few times that I, my computer has to go through some sort of rebooting system and our brain needs to do that. And it needs time to do that. Uh, and so this is just basically what happens during the REM and the non-REM stages. And another thing with not only that there is memory consolidation, not only that there is uh, also uh, time for the brain to be able to, uh, the, the neurons to be able to work together in order to store different memories, uh, our brain is also like a dishwasher. <laughs> It cleanses your, it, it needs a cleansing time. And this cleansing time is very crucial uh, because uh, uh, a scientist over in Rochester University have actually found, and they've, they've named it as glymphatic system, and where there is the glial cells and the way that it is actually involved in cleaning some of the proteins that are accumulated in the brain. And then the lymphatic system that is uh, within our body is involved in cleaning the cerebrospinal fluid. And they've actually done some tests on mice and they've found that uh, when they induce, they, they wanted to figure out, okay, so there's cleaning in the lymphatic system, I mean the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the fluid that is in your brain. Uh, when they clean it up, does that, does that have anything to do with sleep? So they tested these mice and they, and they basically, when the mice falls into sleep, they injected some of these um, molecules and follow basically the pathway. And they found that with sleep, there is a greater cleansing of these proteins called, called beta amyloids and various other neurotoxins. And these beta amyloids, if you have an accumulation of the beta amyloids in your brain, you actually then have a predisposition towards Alzheimer's disease. So this is a really important finding that they had uh, a few years ago, I think 2013 or 12, and uh, where sleep can actually protect you from developing neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. And uh, that's because during sleeping time, these neurotoxins such as the beta amyloids are being cleared from the cerebrospinal fluid and the, so the brain is able to go oh we can start i've done my dusting i've done my polishing and now we can start the day again so this is really important to to know that when we're actually doing nothing we're doing something to our body uh, in a good way in a positive way another thing with sleeping uh, interestingly, it releases something, and this something is a secret to reversing nature's age. It also fights disease rage, and it keeps you in this vitality stage in your life. Uh, and can anyone wanna may, maybe wanna guess something that the brain releases that gives you these? Um, I'll take some, some serotonin here, yeah? but there's another one, another sister of it. Melatonin, yes. So the brain also releases both serotonin and, and melatonin, and so it becomes a powerhouse, and this powerhouse comes from this very small uh, region within your brain called the pineal gland, and which is located here. Sorry, and um, so that's basically the enlarged uh, version of it. This pineal gland releases epithalamin. It releases, so it improves your learning capacity. It also impedes aging, very nice. Uh, arginine vasotocin, which is uh, able to then allow you to fall into sleep. Serotonin, which elevates your mood. So if you eat carbohydrates, what happens? You feel better because it actually then produces the serotonin. Now, melatonin is one thing that is known as the nighttime or clock hormone, but is also known as the melatonin miracle hormone because it reverses your, uh, or your age and also fights diseases and even enhances your sex hormone. So uh, this is something that, you know, Many pharma, uh, pharmaceutical companies have actually developed melatonin pills 
for some of the older people, as you age, the melatonin, uh, the production of it is reduced. But what melatonin does is that it protects against free radical damage from carcinogens, from herbicides and from radiation. Melatonin also prevents and helps fight against tumors. Melatonin delays the effects of aging and also it enhances your immune system. What an amazing thing, isn't it? That our body has been designed so well that even from a small, tiny portion of the brain, there is this release of this hormone that you need to buy from the store. <laughs> In fact, you know, it comes to you for free every time you go to sleep. But the thing is, you need to ensure that there are things to uh, uh, factors to include in your life so that you can release this melatonin uh, efficiently. So how melatonin is made is when there is tryptophan that is in the circulation. So the tryptophan is then converted within the brain to serotonin during the day. So when there is light, we, our brain releases this serotonin. We feel good, we're able to function, relate with others, and we're able to go through the day. And then when it comes to nighttime, the melatonin gets released in the presence of darkness and also in the presence of calcium, when there is enough calcium and there is, when there is enough vitamin B6 in your diet. So some of the things that we can uh, receive from melatonin, again, it protects against free radical damage, it delays the aging, it enhances the immune system, fights against tumors, lowers the risk of osteoporosis, even uh, lowers your chance of, of developing uh, heart disease and increases your ability to experience pleasure and also assist in coping with stress. We can have this in our body if we have a healthy body. And, uh, and it's, it's really important for us to be able to know that the things that are going on, the signs that are going on in our body, in our system, so that we are able to then benefit from it uh, and also induce more of a, I'm um, sorry that that picture is a bit grainy, but a lady who has received some wisdom uh, over in the 1800 uh, time, she has written that sleep is worth far more before than after midnight. Two hours of good sleep before 12 o'clock is worth far more than four hours after 12 o'clock. Now, I don't know if you have experience this or whether it's just me. But I have found that when I have slept, let's say, at, um, at 10, and then I would wake up early at 5 or even, uh, even 4 o'clock, you know, only having six hours sleep there, I felt a little bit better than, let's say, if it was six hours, than if I was to actually sleep at 2, and wake up in the morning at 8 and yet it's the same number of hours of sleep but I feel more tired when I wake up at 8 o'clock but I slept already for six hours but I felt more tired and this is because of melatonin uh, so the melatonin level is increased as I mentioned before in the evening but then it starts to reduce uh, down towards um, towards the morning and then it goes back, again, uh, get, goes back up again in the evening. And what you want to do is that you want to ensure that you catch as much of melatonin secretion as possible. You want to induce your brain to secrete melatonin. And if you're pretty much in the, in the light, uh, uh, exposed in, uh, with light, whether it's in the sun or whether it's even in your room with light, the melatonin cannot be produced. It needs darkness. So that's why when you're sleeping, you need to sleep in the dark. No light. No light at all. And uh, if you need to have, there are actually special lights, for example, for babies and for those who, uh, for the elderly who needs a bit of direction when they need to get up in the, uh, in the evening uh, for the toilet break. But there are special ones that doesn't actually induce the wakefulness. But if, when you're sleeping, you need that night darkness to be able uh, for the pineal gland to then release the, uh, convert the tryptophan and the serotonin into melatonin. <clears throat> 
so some of the food that also will help us to be able to have tryptophan and as well as melatonin. So there's tofu, roasted pumpkin seeds, gluten flour, sesame seeds, almonds, black walnuts, uh, whole meal, whole milk, sorry, and then oats, corn, rice, ginger, tomatoes, banana, barley. These are some of the wholesome foods that we can have for our own body. And also for calcium, we can get calcium from carrot flour, from milk, from figs, from hazelnuts, uh, turnip greens, from dried sesame seeds, baked beans, molasses, dandelions, and quinoa, lentils, oatmeal, and just eat, like green vegetables are also full of calcium. So if you want to have a better sleep, you need to also fuel your body with good food. So how long should we actually sleep for? And uh, the optimal sleep time is seven to eight hours. Now, we're thinking, okay, well, maybe we need to, sometimes you're really tired and you need to really sleep. Sleep. If you really need to sleep, then you sleep. Sleep longer if you need to. But to do it regularly for 10 hours every single day or more, you actually will... Uh, increase yourself to be more susceptible to, of developing uh, diabetes and as well as heart disease for women and um, or even risk of heart attack. And uh, this is something that is, uh, they found basically through different epidemiological studies and uh, it, which is something that they're, everyone is still trying to figure out why there is this um, there is this increase of disease risk when you sleep longer than nine hours. For teenagers, for example, they need to sleep longer. Teenagers need, to, uh, children need to sleep. Uh, during the sleeping time, children are actually growing. Uh, they need that growth time uh, while they're sleeping. And teenagers also need pretty much nine hours of sleep. So for those uh, teens who are slumbering away and we're trying to wake them up from their sleep, if they've had nine hours of sleep, that's good. Allow them to, give, to get that nine hours of sleep. But what about less? What if we have less than seven to eight hours? So for less than, for example, less than three hours, um, it reduces your immune function. So you'll start to get colds. You'll start to feel, oh, gluggy. And then if you have less than five hours, it increases your risk of developing heart disease, diabetes, the chronic disease, and as well as gaining weight. Um, I found that if I'm actually not having enough sleep, I tend to grace more during the day. I don't know about you, but that's what I found. I found that, oh, I'm feeling sleepy, so I better eat. <laughs> or I'm feeling sleepy, oh, I feel like having a snack now. Oh, and you know that chocolate break? Uh, the 2 p.m. chocolate break or that 3.30 time when you're, you're sl your eyes are slowly drooping forward and your head is drooping forward in front of the computer. So when we have enough sleep, we don't really tend to snack. And, um, and that's really because uh, of, the, um, of the hormone um, leptin and ghrelin. So ghrelin is increased when you haven't had enough sleep and it allows your, it makes you want to eat more. It's an appetite hormone. But leptin, uh, on the other hand, if you have enough sleep, the leptin hormone is increased and you don't really need to eat more uh, and it actually suppresses the appetite. So the sleeping time, when you sleep, how long you sleep is important for your health. Some of the things that even disrupt sleep, pain and discomfort, the poor little girl, she's, she looks like she's in pain. Um, temperature is ideal, as I mentioned before, uh, where 18 degrees is, is, is a good temperature for you to sleep in. Doesn't mean that like your, you need to, it's just that your environment needs to be uh, about that uh, temperature. And then exercise. Exercise helps us to fall asleep easily at night. And if you have done enough exercise, it actually helps you to then sleep soundly. Um, and don't exercise within three hours of sleeping time because your body is still very much hot after you're exercising. And so your body needs to cool down. But if your body is too hot or warm, uh, your sleeping will be disrupted. Noise. 
noise is uh, if you're living in a flat uh, apartment or very noisy neighbor. I know that my neighbor, who, uh, whose house is actually very close to my bedroom window, so they tend to have these disco parties usually. And, uh, and it's, it's okay if I really don't know the songs, but when I do know the songs, I just be, you know, thinking about it in my head. <laughs> I have to close my ears and at times I have to actually put headphones in my ears because I just needed to sleep and I, I, I couldn't sleep. So noise is a huge factor. Hunger, uh, don't sleep when you're hungry, but don't also, when you're, when you're eating at night, this is another thing, eating at night, um, it disrupts the release of melatonin as well. Uh, when you're, you're pretty much your gastric uh, lining it has these uh, cells which releases, um, which helps to basically release the melatonin. And so if, you're, if there's actually food in your stomach at night, it, um, it, there's a bit of disruption there and reduction of the melatonin production. And also bright light. Uh, if electronic devices, and I'm guilty of this, uh, you know, before you go to sleep, your iPads, your phone, put it away because you want to bring yourself into relaxation mode as you, as you enter into the sleeping time. So these are some of the things that I need to do as well. And I really hope that you too can, can benefit from it. Uh, they've also found that there is a link between sleepless nights and depression. They found that, uh, studies have found that with 8,000 subjects that have been looked at, uh, 10% of the subjects who had insomnia, they suffer, they develop these mental disorders, uh, and also they, there is an increased risk for them to develop depressions for the insomniacs, and there is also a 60% greater likelihood of developing depressive episodes for those who experience temporary sleeplessness. So um, our sleep is important to also protect our moods and our mental health. Some of the disorders of sleep, insomnia, obstructive sleep ap apnea, narcolepsy, epilepsy in sleep, and even snoring. These are the things that are, that disturbs not only just your own sleep, but also your partner's sleep. And uh, there are ways in which, and if you have these, you really need to con contact your health professionals, your doctor, to be able to have a, um, yeah, to, to fix your, your sleeping time because as I mentioned before, sleeping is very, very important for your health. And um, snoring, for example, it, uh, for those who snore, you, if you snore, you don't necessarily uh, have sleep apnea, but you can develop sleep apnea when you have a tendency of snoring. And it's important that you would also go and see the doctor to go to see the sleep doctor and they can actually test whether or not you have sleep apnea. And, uh, and yeah, sleep apnea is one thing that where your breathing is disrupted during your sleeping time because of the palate that comes down and it, uh, it pretty much disrupts the airway to flow through. So if you're feeling tired during the day, usually uh, you're always falling asleep. Maybe ask, consider, whether maybe you have some sleep apnea symptoms. And this is something that needs to be uh, rectified soon. So to end, what are the seven factors for adequate sleep? Firstly, waking up with the sun. This will be important. Uh, by spending one hour in the morning light helps to actually sleep at night. Increase your level of alertness, it enhances the serotonin secretion and also it enhances the melatonin to then be released in the evening. So sunlight is important and what you'll, you'll realize here as I go through some of the seven factors for sleeping well is that our body, all of the different systems are well connected together for us to be able to be healthy. We need to sleep, in order to sleep we need sunlight. Sunlight also helps us to be able to have some calcium in our bones because there is the production of the vitamin D. And uh, the next thing is also eating a balanced diet. 
When we eat well that are rich in complex carbohydrates, not refined carbohydrates, and tryptophan, such as you know, from tofu and all the other stuff there, carbohydrates um, allow the tryptophan to enter the brain, and of course then the tryptophan gets converted and synthesized to, re to release serotonin as well as melatonin. Physical activity. Uh, we all know we need to exercise and we need to exercise every day. If you can exercise every day, do it. Uh, if you don't have time, you can only do it in the evening, just do it, <laughs> just exercise. And if you don't have time to do like a significant amount of exercise during the day, then you can do small bursts. Uh, and in fact, you know, the new, uh, some of the new uh, uh, disease causing um, lifestyle activity is sitting. So what I've done to you right now is that I've actually increased your chance of developing colon cancer. I'm so sorry. Um, but also that you will, you tend to, when, you, when you're actually just sitting down and you're not doing anything, we need to get up where our circulation is not working as well. Our brain activity is also reduced. So that's why your your concentration time span is, being, is, is reducing and it's slowly starting to fall asleep or you're starting to think about something else. So moderate physical activity is important to allow for us to be able to sleep. But if you can't do it at all, um, what I mean at all is you don't have time for it, then take some breaks during the day. So at work, we skip. We skip in the morning at 10.30 and we skip in the afternoon at 3.30. Just a bunch of us together and we skip, you know, for like five minutes, uh, four or five minutes, and then we go back to sit down again. It actually makes a big difference when you get up and you do something and you induce your body's um, basically circulation to, to, uh, to be more enhanced, I guess, and uh, your brain activity will then start again. And also, when you're uh, exercising, it releases hormones for you to sleep at night. It makes you feel good, and it also makes you feel sleepy in the evening. Uh, and also, it is a time when your body is allowed to be able to detoxify. Avoid substances that deprive you from sleep. Alcohol. Try not to to actually drink some alcohol before you sleep. Uh, I know that people say, oh, well, it allows me to then calm down, but it actually uh, reduces the release of the serotonin the, uh, and, and a, a whole heap of other hormones as well. Caffeine, it blocks uh, the communication between adenosine and the brain. And, uh, and adenosine is important to induce, to induce ourselves into relaxation. And, uh, and also caffeine cuts the melatonin production by half for at least six hours. So if you need to drink caffeine, really, I mean, you can survive without caffeine. I used to drink caffeine or well, coffee pretty much two cups every day uh, ever since I was in year 11. And, um, you know, I started thinking, oh, wow, what's this kind of like coffee thing? And everyone is like drinking coffee. So I gave it a try and I thought, actually, it's really... It's actually not bad. I, I quite like it. I started drinking this coffee milk. And then I just became so used to and so happy, you know, just in this habit of drinking coffee. Every, as soon as I wake up in the morning, whoever is uh, waking up first in the morning will turn on the percolator and you can smell the coffee in the house and it smells really good. And that's what I would be drinking. And then I'd eat my cereal and I go straight to the toilet. And that was just my regular, reg, regular kind of cycle. And uh, when I stopped drinking coffee, boy, I couldn't go to the toilet. And my body was just thinking, what's happening here? Uh, you know, you need some caffeine. But I, I persisted with it and I gave it a try for about two weeks. And I struggled with my bowel. But after that, it's back to normal. Now I don't really need to de depend on, on caffeine. So uh, it is possible for you to not depend on caffeine. And I can just from my own experience, I can tell you that. Uh, so uh, caffeine also prevents REM sleep, which is really the time when your 
memory is being consolidated, it raises your blood pressure, it increases your irritability, causes anxiety, it stunts growth in kids. So these are really not good things to put into your body if you really want to be healthy. Nicotine, if you're smoking, uh, this affects of course the deep sleep stages. So please, if you're smoking, consider, consider quitting because it's important for your health, just for your own, your whole system. Uh, antidepressants, sleeping pills, these also decrease the levels of the REM um, stages and disrupts it. Number five, have an established early bedtime. I was doing that for a while and then now I have fallen away from early bedtime and I'm trying to get back into it again. Uh, and I just would like to encourage you to take on this very principle. Having two and a half hours before midnight is best or earlier. And a uh, regular pattern of sleep. Uh, if you actually have regular pattern of sleep, uh, when you sleeping at the same time every evening, it actually allows your body to then develop a clock system. So then your body will go, okay, we need to sleep at this time. That means we need to be awake at this time. Your brain knows what to do. Your brain says, be awake, be sleeping, right? So when you're awake, you don't really want to sleep. We, it, it reduces your production and your efficiency, your memory capacity, your concentration, uh, your, just your way of being interesting. So your body needs to actually understand when is the right time to sleep, when is the right time to be awake. And if you develop this regular pattern, it helps you to be able to, to train your body to, to function well. Uh, and for those who want to be more effective during the day, I've read some blogs and they've actually said, yeah, having regular sleep times, uh, w sleeping time and waking up time, it helps you to be more effective. Uh, night shift workers is, it, is a bit of a hard one. And, it's, um, and also for those who travel a lot, who go through jet lags. So spend time during the day in the sun. It helps you to, to actually reset your body clock. And look, for night shift workers, I take my hat out to you, you know, for, for you nurses. And uh, it is a difficult thing. And uh, I hope that you're able to actually, yeah, spend some time in the sun though during the day so that your body is able to then reset. Melatonin, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry, that number six is the wrong one. It's supposed to say sleep in the dark. Sleep in the dark. Make sure that if you've got some light coming in through your curtain, then get a different kind of curtain. Get a different kind of blind so that you can have a, a dark room. Dark room is very important for the melatonin to be produced. And uh, if you need to go to the bathroom in the evening, go to the bathroom. You know, we don't want any wet beds and discomfort and inconvenience. But if you need to go to the bathroom, don't turn on the bathroom light. Try to feel your way around. Because if you turn on your bathroom light, then again, it disrupts your melatonin production still in the evening. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like if, you're, if you've been asleep, let's say from 10, and you wake up at 1, you're busting to go to the toilet, you go to the toilet and just try to feel your way around. Be really careful about it. And, uh, and just make sure that it's still, that your environment is still dark. And number seven is uh, something that is really more of a personal thing for me. And I think this is something that also can be of benefit, especially if you've got insomnia and also if you have a lot of anxieties. I have found that I need to leave my worries behind. I can't sleep being worried. I've tried to sleep being worried and, and oftentimes when I'm anxious about something, I need to write something down so that I can actually go, okay, now I'm putting it aside because I've, I've written that down so I need to revisit it, but now I need to actually sleep. Um, so I have found that emotional, when I'm stressed, I need to pray and as a Christian, that's what I do. And if you're not a Christian here, uh, you can, you know, try other things, but I have found that praying works very well for me. Uh, it's not necessarily because I'm trying to focus on my problem, 
but in praying, I've actually given my problem away to my God who takes that burden from me. And I have uh, learned that from the wisdom uh, in scripture, it says that praying, uh, when we pray, we give it all to, uh, to God. And it says, be angry and don't sin. So if I'm angry and frustrated, then really, I sometimes I, I, I'll be awake and I'll be counting sheep. I'll be thinking, trying to, you know, put my, just my, turn on some, some music, trying to induce me to sleep. But at times I really can't until I need to just get up, sit up or kneel and, and pray. It says, be angry, don't sin. Uh, I need to let go of whatever it is that I have in my heart against someone. And don't, it says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So this is, uh, if, you've, if you have a conflict with someone, um, give it to God. And, because I know it works for me. Or, uh, you know, talk to that person and try to solve the, uh, the problem. And also it says that um, God himself allows me to be able to dwell in him safely because I've rested upon him. I've taken my burden and go, this is going to be your problem, God, not my problem because I need to sleep. And it actually makes a big difference when we have that mentally in our mind. And I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, we all are, are exposed to different challenges in life. And challenges in life can be really tough. And it can really break our hearts, cause us to, uh, it disrupts our rela relationships with others. And, and also it impacts on our health. So if you want to have a good sleep, some of these factors I hope will be useful for you and, and I hope that you can apply it and that you can share it with others too. And even if you want to change your sleep pattern, talk to people in your home and make that as an, they, they can be accountable to your decision to want to sleep better or to want to sleep earlier, uh, that they don't disrupt you. And if you know, friends who message you at night, you can, turn, you can tell them, hey, I, I now want to go into this sleeping pattern, uh, sleep uh, routine and don't, don't you know, disrupt me uh, during the evening or otherwise, you know, put your phone on silent uh, or turn it off, put it on the, on the um, night switch mode uh, for those who have Apple and I'm sure Samsung has a different um, way of programming as well with that. So you don't actually hear the messages coming through in the evening. So I just want to share with these, uh, these principles and I hope they are useful for you. Thank you. We have just a couple of minutes. Perhaps we could uh, take a couple of questions. So anybody who has a pressing question they'd like to put to Christiana, now's your opportunity to do so. Question. Yes, Nick, go ahead. Um, My question is, Christian, uh, in regards to sleep, in terms of the number of hours we get, is it important that they be all at once, or is that just a total, can it be in different periods of time? How important is uh, the actual length of time we're asleep? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Well, from what I've read, uh, it is important to have an undisturbed hours of sleep and uh, you want to aim for that undisturbed hours of sleep and uh, but if you can't get it then get as much of the sleep you can get um, it's actually better if you if you have you know the seven to eight hours solid seven to eight hours sleep not kind of broken down four hours here and then three hours later yeah so to put it another way, Christiana, perhaps you could say, apply as many of those guidelines and principles as you possibly can. If your work situation or other thing prevents it, well, do your best to follow as many as you possibly can. Yeah. I was going to ask about having a power nap in the afternoon. Some people uh, benefit from that. That doesn't mean you can have an hour less during the night. Yes. But nonetheless, it won't hurt you to. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I am actually a believer in some of, if you need to have a nap, go and nap <laughs> and but I wouldn't say long naps though naps are naps and <laughs> they're not like long sleeps <laughs> because exactly. then that that can disrupt your sleep in the evening too okay, so uh, might rob you of that quality of sleep that's right time, yeah. you're not going to be able to your body's from feeling oh you know I've already had my sleep 
but yeah, 20 minutes, 20 minute naps are actually good naps. Okay, one more question, if we have, if you have anyone there. Okay, well, very good, Christiana. Thanks so much for your presentation. We're going to have a pause of about uh, 30 minutes now. We come back to our second program for today. So feel free to use the facilities outside. There's water out there in the kitchen area, bathrooms, of course. And uh, feel free to mingle and chat to Christiana and uh, you might have some questions you'd like to put to her personally. So thanks again, Christiana. We'll see you back here in 30 minutes. <laughs>